Hey guys and welcome to another very exciting visual effects tutorial. Now this, this is a Pokeball. This, this is a Great Ball. And finally, this is an Ultra Ball. While they all differ in their capabilities to catch Pokemon, one thing they have in common is that they all make for great examples of how to use motion tracking to, for example, attach a cool little text label to moving objects within your footage. In this tutorial, I want to show you how to use HitFilm Express, a free video editing and visual effects compositing software, to motion track a moving object within your footage and basically attach anything you want to it. With this simple technique, you will then be able to track texts or graphics or a halo or anything into your shot. Hey! And essentially integrate some really funky effects to make your videos look more exciting. This is going to be a pretty basic video, however I will assume that you have watched and understood my absolute beginner tutorial on how to use HitFilm Express. But now, before I talk your ears off, let's jump right into the tutorial. Welcome to HitFilm Express, I have a brand new empty project here. Now I have already covered all of the basics of the software in my absolute beginner tutorial so I'm not going to go over all of that again, but even if you're not an expert you should not have any problems following along. First off, let's start by importing some footage into our project. I have a folder here with two files that I will make available for you to download in the description of the video if you do want to follow along. So I have an arrow PNG and I have a Pokeball MP4 movie clip. So let's select both of these files and drag them into our media panel to import them into our project. And let's simply select and drag the Pokeball movie onto our editor timeline. If you get a little pop-up appear asking you to adjust your sequence settings, simply hit OK. It just means that when you created your project, you didn't match the resolution or frame rate of the video clip we're using here, so that's OK, just click it away. Let's check out this clip we have here and I'm temporarily going to disable the audio as well because otherwise it's going to interfere with me recording this tutorial. So if we scrub through, it's just a short clip from the intro to this tutorial of me waving around this little Pokeball. We are now going to track the movement of this Pokeball that I'm waving around and attach a little piece of text as well as an arrow to it. Obviously this is a rather simple example but I just want to take you through the steps of what is required to motion track something and then attach elements to the moving objects within your footage. Now you can't do motion tracking on your main editor timeline, you actually need to do that within a composite shot. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on my clip and select make composite shot. Let's give this clip a useful name, let's call it Pokeball Composite Shot. I always find it a little bit long, I prefer to call it Pokeball Comp and then hit OK. Here we are within the Composite Shot and right now it only contains a single layer and this is the clip from the editor timeline of me waving around the Pokeball. Before we get to attach any text to the Pokeball, we first need to track its movement. So let's enable the motion tracker in HitFilm Express and in order to do that, simply within your Composite Shot, expand the layer that you want to track. You'll find a little tracks section and over on the right hand side a little plus. So let's click that plus. And this will now bring open on the right hand side the tracking panel. So we've now added a tracker to this layer that will allow us to track the movement of an element within this footage. Let me move this panel over a little bit and if I now zoom in on my clip I can see I have a little track point here. I'll zoom in a little bit more because the track point has a few different elements. Now it contains a green square on the outside, a red one and then a little dot in the center. And the way this works is that everything within this red inner rectangle is the element we want to track. Let's pan over a little bit to my Pokeball and let's drag this track point right on the center of the Pokeball and I want to make sure that this red rectangle encompasses the inner circle on my Pokeball because this is the element that I actually want to track the movement for. Next you will notice that this track point also has a green rectangle on the outside and this is the search area so from frame to frame as you're tracking the motion tracker will try to find the contents of the red rectangle within the confines of the green one. The movement of this within this green area is going to be tracked and the position that will be saved during this tracking process is defined by this little track point here. So right now I'm going to place that 
in the middle of the circle for my Pokeball, right in the center. Obviously, you could actually track the movement of this Pokeball, but apply the position to my shoulder or some other element in your shot. And this can be really useful if your track point goes off screen, but that's probably a topic for another tutorial. For now, let's make sure that the position we're tracking is right in the center of the Pokeball. And let's come over into our tracker panel and check out some of the options. In the tracker panel, the first thing we need to define is the type of tracking we want to do. Right now, we're only tracking a single point. So we're only getting a single track point because we're really only interested in the position of the Pokeball. You can also select double points, which will then essentially allow you to track position, scale and rotation. And if you select that, and let's zoom out a little bit, you'll notice that you get a second track point because you need two track points to track rotation and scale within the elements you're tracking. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to return this to single point and my track points have disappeared. So I need to actually reselect my tracker. Not sure why. So, you know, if your track points disappear, make sure you're reselecting the tracker on the layer that you're tracking. So back to the track panel, you now can select the method for tracking and you can either use optical flow or a template match. And this becomes a little bit more technical. Optical flow essentially tries to follow the optical movement of the elements within your shot and it'll work with things like blurry frames or if it's temporarily obstructed. So I'd always prefer using optical flow for any sort of simple tracking. And obviously within options, you then have a bunch of options. For example, one important one is the error tolerance. This defines how easily the tracker stops and says, oh, I couldn't track this frame. Maybe you want to manually adjust this. So the higher this threshold, the more noise the tracker will essentially just push through. But the more inaccurate your track is also likely going to come out. Next, you can define the iterations for your optical flow. This will improve accuracy the higher you jack this up, but it will make the process a little bit slower. So usually I like to leave this on the default. And for template matching, you can then also define whether you want to track through the luminance, the brightness channel within your footage or RGB. But again, I usually leave these ones on default. Hit Film Express does a pretty good job if you just kind of run with what's set up for you. So let's hit OK. And now let's track the movement of this Pokeball. And tracking you can do backwards as well as forward. And it usually pays off to start out with a frame where the object is nice and clear and sharp so that you can kind of the tracker gets the best starting point and then you can track both forward and backwards to really get this track rock solid. You can decide whether you want to track a single frame or automatically backward or forwards. For now, I'm simply going to click on track forward and Hit Film Express will play through my footage and try to track the movement of the Pokeball as best as it can. And that actually worked out all right. So let's zoom in a little bit and check this out. And you can see that the track point follows the movement of this Pokeball. If you expand the tracker, you will find a tracking point. And if you expand that and zoom in, you can see that HitFilm has automatically created all of these keyframes for the position of the point we're tracking. So let's go to the very beginning to the first frame here. And from here, we now need to track backwards to fill in all of this information. In order to do that, let's return to the tracking panel and let's simply hit track back. And you will notice that HitFilm Express has stopped tracking. This is because with this frame, you can see it's actually kind of blurry and HitFilm didn't quite know whether it managed to track properly. And if we go into the options, remember this error tolerance, it's hit this error tolerance and therefore to stop to track. So let's cancel out of this. Make sure that the track point is still on and this actually looks pretty good. And then simply hit track back again. Again, a bit of a challenging frame and HitFilm has automatically stopped tracking. So let's simply click within this inner red rectangle and drag and adjust this to make sure that the track point is right in the center of the Pokeball. And again, click track back. Yep, that still looks okay. Track back. There it goes. Ah, oh, there's some really fast movement here as I'm swinging the Pokeball around like a crazy person. Let's just readjust the track point every time HitFilm stops and keep pressing track back. These frames are all pretty bad for tracking because of all of the motion blur, but I should stop swinging the ball around in just a little bit. So let's just manage to power through this. Yep, that's starting to look a bit better. There you go. And again, so let's just readjust it every time hit film stops. Make sure we remain in the center of the Pokeball and just keep on trucking. 
and we're at the very beginning. So we now tracked through our entire clip. Let me zoom out a little bit again. You can now see we have tracking data for this track point throughout our entire composite shot. And if I zoom out again, you can see the trail that I'm swinging this Pokeball around. And if you now scrub through, you should see that the track point follows the movement precisely. That's pretty cool, but how do we go about now attaching a piece of text to the movement of this Pokeball? For that, we need to extract the tracking information from this tracker into a separate layer. This is where point layers, which are called nulls in After Effects, are great. So let's create a new layer and let's create a point. I'm going to call this point Pokeball. Then I'm going to reselect my tracker. And in my tracker, in step two, I now can apply my tracking data to a layer. My purpose is to transform. I don't actually want to stabilize my footage. I just want to apply the transform information, which is this motion tracking information. And the layer I want to apply it to is my Pokeball. This is my point layer here. I'm going to apply the X and Y position. So this whole movement that we've tracked, this is the X and Y coordinates for every single frame. I'm going to apply that to my Pokeball. So let's simply hit apply. While it may seem like nothing at all has happened, let's collapse the layer that we've tracked and let's expand the Pokeball and expand the transform. And you will now see that the position property of this point has been keyframed. If everything goes black in your screen, by the way, it is because you're still viewing the layer. So you may want to switch this back to your viewer. And with the Pokeball selected and the position property selected, you can now see these are all of the keyframes for the position of this Pokeball point layer. So we now have a point in our composite shot that follows the movement of this Pokeball. And the great thing is that we can now parent other layers to this movement and they will follow along with this motion. Let's scrub forward a little bit to where I'm holding the Pokeball a little bit more like a sane person. And let's attach some text to the movement of this Pokeball. For that, let's simply select the text tool, click into our viewer to create a new text layer. Yep, 400 by 400. I'm just going to go with the default. That's probably OK. And let's type some text. Let's reselect the selection tool and let's just position this text somewhere here on the side next to the Pokeball. And now let's come down into our layer window and maybe I'll rename this one as well. Let's call this layer text. Over on the right hand side in this little drop down, you can determine what this layer is parented to. So let's open this up and let's parent this text element to the Pokeball point, which is this point layer. So the movement of this text will follow the movement of this Pokeball point. Let's rewind a little bit and play this back. And you can see that the text is now following the movement of the Pokeball. Next, let's bring our little arrow into the composite shot as well. So I'm simply going to select it and drag it and drop it right into my viewer. And there's the little arrow. So let's position it and rotate it around. So it's kind of pointing at the Pokeball. So maybe right there. Um, also, I don't like that the arrow is all black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it, come into my effects panel. And in here, let's search for the invert effect. And let's apply the invert effect to this arrow just so it's nice and wide and it fits in a little bit better and reposition it right where we want it. And obviously we now also want this arrow to follow the movement of the Pokeball. For that, we could take the arrow layer, come down into the layers and also parent it to the Pokeball point. However, I actually want to animate this text to kind of come in together with the arrow as I'm moving this Pokeball around. And if they're both parented to the Pokeball point means I need to animate both of them. Instead, I actually like to just have my text parented to the Pokeball. So only the text follows the movement of the Pokeball. And then the arrow I'm going to parent to my text. So the arrow just follows the movement of the text, which follows the movement of the Pokeball. So if I scrub through, you can see that both the arrow and the text are following the movement of the Pokeball. Also, if I scrub back, you may notice that the arrow disappears and that's because the arrow layer is not actually extending the entire duration of our composite shot. So I'm just going to select the end of this arrow and kind of just drag it forward. So we've got the arrow visible throughout the entire composite shot. And now the last thing I want to do is I want to animate this text and this arrow to kind of come in from the side and attach themselves to this Pokeball. For that, let's come to a time position where we want the arrow to appear. Maybe about here looks kind of cool. 
Let's select the text because this is kind of the element that I want to animate because remember the arrow just follows the movement of the text anyways. So let's expand the text layer, expand the transform property and let's set a keyframe on the position. So just click on this little circle here. So this is where the Pokeball text and arrow are properly attached. Let's go back just a little bit, maybe to about here. And let's just simply drag this whole element off the screen. So we now animated the position. So over these few frames, the text will kind of come in from the side and attach to the Pokeball. And the last thing to do, I want this text element to have a little bit of motion blur as it comes in from the side. And that is really easy to enable in HitFilm Express. Simply come down into your layer window. And here, this is little icon here that enables motion blur on the text and on the arrow. So there's a little bit of cool motion blur as this arrow comes in from the side. And finally, let's zoom back out, scale to fit. I'm going to make this tracker a little bit smaller as well so we can see a little bit more of our final effect. Rewind the composite shot and play back the final motion tracked Pokeball effect. Hey guys, and welcome to another very exciting Game Effects tutorial. Now this, this is a Pokeball. And it really is as easy as that. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please show your support by liking, favoriting and sharing it with the world. Don't forget to subscribe if you do want to see some more cool filmmaking and visual effects tutorials just like this one. And as always, if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down in the section below. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.